Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Sunday, January the 23rd. As we begin our service, we acknowledge the land in which we are gathered on is the traditional territory first of the neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is with the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We are reminded that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous peoples' resources and friendship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only art Christ with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord hath given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, 
for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of these of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. We will say Psalm 19 responsibly by the full verse. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tales to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens, runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. Statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold sweeter fire than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Can tell how often he offends. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me, Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Gracious creator of heaven and earth, your word has come among us as the true son of righteousness and the good news of his birth has gone out to the ends of the world Open our eyes to the light of your law, that we may be purified from our sin and serve you without reproach for the sake of Jesus Christ, our light and our life. Amen. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, 
God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the, pro and the, scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of man is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then they began... Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to do something today that I don't normally do. And that is, this, my, uh, my sermon today is actually on Paul's letter to the Corinthians and not the gospel. I want to talk to you about fitting in. Most people want to fit in. We, we want to belong. As teenagers, that desire is incredibly overwhelming and sometimes almost visceral. I do not know about you, but I, I can remember in high school, there were times what I would have done or said almost anything to kind of fit in with the group that I was trying to get into. The desire to fit in does not go away when we're adults. It might change, it might not be as deep or as desperate when we're young, but it's still there. And it can still get us into a wee bit of trouble. The week after Michael, my husband, became a police officer, uh, we were in a car accident. We totaled our car. And our car was so old that, well, the insurance was absolutely nothing, and we really couldn't afford to buy a new car. A few of the older officers took pity on young Michael and offered him uh, rides to and from work. Michael, of course, very appreciative, said thank you and accepted the rides. Now, here's the thing you need to know about police officers. 
I'm not saying all, but occasionally some of them, after a very long shift, like to go to the local pub and, you know, have a drink and wind down. Unfortunately, the officers that were bringing my husband to and from work like to do it every single night. Now, Michael wanting to fit in and not wanting to admit that we did not have the money to do this said absolutely nothing. He was hanging out with these older officers, listening to their stories and learning. Really not a bad experience. However, him coming home every night, spending money the way he was spending, caused a little bit of grief at home. This went on for about three, four weeks and finally came to a head on Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, Michael was supposed to be home around 6 p.m., give or take. And well, let's just say he came home closer to midnight and it was pretty evident that there was more than one drink on his breath. Over 30 years of being together, I can tell you honestly, there's only one time I ever put my foot down and this was it. We did not have the money for this silliness. And personally, at this stage of the game, I did not care whether or not my husband fit in. I basically told him he needed to suck it up and start taking the bus. After a good night's sleep, he agreed. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter what our age is or where we are in our life. We all want to fit in. Now, we can't always fit in with every group or connect with every person. As hard as we may try, sometimes we just do not click with certain people in certain groups. And that, unfortunately, can sometimes leave us on the outside looking in, which means we can feel a little lonely and a little awkward. But here's the wonderful truth about being Christian. We never have to feel alone. We never have to feel awkward because we are never on the outside looking in. Christianity, the Anglican Church, is the one place where you can always truly, truly belong. As believers in Christ, we get so much. We have the understanding that we are created in the image of God. We understand that we are children of the Lord. We understand that God loves us and will always be there for us no matter what. And we also know that God doesn't have hoops for us to jump through to be a part of this family. There is an estimated 7.9 billion people on this planet. 2.4 billion are believers in Christ. 80 million of them are Anglicans. We belong to an incredibly large family with a multitude of brothers and sisters in Christ. This relationship and connection that we have with each other and with Christ is incredibly deep and it is eternal. And in Paul's second reading in his letter to the um, Corinthians, he refers to this relationship as a body. Just as the body is one and has many, many members, all the members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. The body is an amazing creation. It's completely united. No one ever thinks of the body in its separate parts. You don't just think of your hand as your body or your eyes as your body. We think of it as a whole. As Christians, we are all part of this big, beautiful body. And we need to try and remember that, as hard as it may be at times. We are unified first by just being here, our birth. But we are also united through our baptism. The Anglican Church of Canada website reads, Baptism is a coming into the body of Christ, in which we become members of one another and of Christ. It is about who we are in Christ and whose we are God's own. In baptism, we are gathered and sent forth. In the ministry that is God's own ministry, 
of transformation, reconciliation, healing, and salvation of the world. So baptism is not just about identity and belonging. It's also about being sent into mission and ministry. Baptism is a sign of new life in Christ. Paul says that by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. When we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are given a place in his body and we are identified with him. Our unity is not just because we're all human or because we're all members of St. James and St. Brendan's. Our unity goes beyond our humanity, beyond this church, beyond Port Colborne and this country. Again, we hear, for in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. From my understanding, the prejudice that used to exist between the Jews and the Gentiles was absolutely unbelievable. It was horrible. Paul wanted these people to understand that there were no longer separate churches. He wanted them to know that all prejudice, all bias, all racism needed to be put aside as we were all one unified body. If we are to truly live into being the body of Christ, we need to be able to understand that the church is a place of equality. It is a place where we can celebrate our unity, but also our differences. Being different is a good thing. We all have our own strengths and gifts and talents. Can you imagine how boring the world would be if we were all the exact same? As God's people, we are different, and each one of us has our distinct role to play as members of this body, as members of this family. And instead of looking down on anybody who is different, we should be honor, honoring and celebrating those differences. We need to be raising people up and letting them know that this is where they belong. When a body is healthy, it works incredibly well together. The body might have different parts and different functions, but together it works to make the body strong, to make the heart body successful. We as a church are no different. We all have different parts and different functions. We cannot spend all our time focusing on one particular ministry or one particular group in the church. For the church to grow, to blossom, to be strong and healthy, we need to be able to accept each other and to love each other for who we are. God designed and assigned each of us a function in this wonderful, amazing family. Therefore, again, I say we need to take each other for our differences, with our differences, and try not to change people. For when we try and change people, we are fighting against God's design. And I'm sorry, God doesn't make mistakes. At the end of the reading, we hear God is appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, and then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. All of us have our different gifts and talents. What are yours? How are you contributing to the body of Christ? How are your gifts and talents being used? For they are meant to be used. They are meant to be shared. It is how we demonstrate our love for each other and our gratitude towards God. Also, by sharing our gifts with each other, we are able to de develop an appreciation for each other's uniqueness and we can learn how to work together as one perfect body. This is what I'd like you to think about a little bit this morning. 
How do you treat others that are different than you? How do you treat someone who may have a mental illness or a disability or an impairment? How do you treat somebody of a different nationality or skin color, sexuality, gender, religion, age, or financial status? How do you treat someone who just thinks differently than you, who questions you and challenges you? As I said at the beginning of my sermon, I did not preach on today's gospel. All this week, as I prayed and I read over the gospel, it was the second reading that the Lord kept pulling me back to. It was the second reading that I felt called to write about. Why? What does God want us to take from this? Is it just a reminder that we are different from each other and there is a purpose and a reason for that? Is it a reminder that being different is a part of God's design. Something we need to think about and remember, when we choose to look down on somebody who is different, we are actually looking down on God. Do you really want to look down on God? We are all called by God, by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit to embrace the Lord's design, and to show love to everyone regardless of how we might feel. On the front of our bulletin, it reads, whether you are a regular parishioner or a visitor today, none of us come to church by accident. No matter what joys, burdens, or problems you might bring this day, we pray that God's grace will touch and fill you with the hope and commitment to live your life with peace, courage, compassion, and love. You decided to watch the service today, and I thank you for that. But maybe today is the day that you realize you need to look at someone differently. Maybe today is the day that you realize you need to reach out your hand to help create a healthier body of Christ. Or maybe today is just the day that you realize that you are absolutely amazing as you are, that you belong to the body of Christ, that you do not have to be on the outside looking in because you are a child of God and that God loves you no matter what, just the way you are. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As God is moved by the sincerity of our repentance, so too God is pleased by the faithfulness of our prayers. Let us offer our prayers to God saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the worldwide Anglican communion, we pray for Elizabeth, our queen. We pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. 
we pray for Linda, our primate. In Niagara, we pray for Susan, our bishop, Jody, our rector. We pray for all saints, Dane City, the Reverend Nermal Mendez, and the people of that parish, and for all who nurture our life together that the body may be strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for the leaders of nations, that wisdom and integrity might prevail, for regions torn by conflict, that peace and harmony may be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this parish, for our presence in this community, that persons may find here the means to a deeper relationship with God and for our ministry of reconciliation, that all may find here the forgiveness of God and the acceptance of each other. In our parish family, we pray for Norman Kelly, Clayton and Elner Kendall, Tim and Leslie Kennedy, Sharon Kindry, Cecile King, Matt and Henrietta Kodatsky, Robert and Marlene Krasik and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called us, O God, to follow you. Give us the grace to listen to your call, to lay aside all the things of this world, and to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have sent us, O God, into the world to tell the story of your love and faithfulness. Give us a holy zeal for the proclamation of the gospel in this place and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called, O God, persons of varieties of gifts to serve your church. Bless, we pray, the ministries of musicians and artists, writers and scholars, pastors and teachers, that their work enrich our common life and offer us a glimpse of the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gave life, O God, for us and for all people. We remember before you those who are sick, especially John Butt, Elner Sharuk, Mary Cullen, Blake Dayball, Elizabeth Ebert, Louise Hayton, Robert Krasick, Nancy Lisk, Dominic, Julia, Donna, Megan, Anthony, Tammy, and Derek. And we pray especially for those affected by COVID. We pray for their caregivers, that health and wellness might be theirs. We pray for those who have departed this life, especially the Reverend Dr. Paul Saison Gibson, former General Senate liturgical officer. The way of the Good Shepherd begins right here in all the mess that we and our world find ourselves. It provides no final answer, but only the intimation that the way may be found and may only be found on the way itself. As you have reached out to us in love, so inspire us to be present to those we have named before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we are faithful in prayer, O God, so make us faithful in following you, that loving and serving you all the days of our lives we may know the joy of the resurrection and may look with longing for our coming in power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. 
Come unto, come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy and upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you at home. Let us pray. Loving God, before the world began, you called us. Make holy all we offer you this day and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet and right in our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. For thou art the fount fountain of light and the life of all thy creation. 
Thou hast made us in thine own image and dost rise us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to you, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to offer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his, of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we are receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution. In remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of thy holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he has commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. My dear friends, for those of you who could not be here with us today, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints in the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With the whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our hands have taken holy things. Our lives have been nourished by the body of your Son. May we who have eaten at this holy table be strengthened for service in your world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God preserve you. May the hands of God protect you. And may the way of God direct you. And may the blessing of God go with you this day and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I, have a few, I actually have a few announcements today. A couple dates I would like you to mark on your calendars, please, and thank you. Um, Sunday. Uh, February the 27th uh, is Vestry. Uh, it will be via Zoom as of right now. Uh, we will also have a local phone number for you to call in if you don't have internet. The exact time, I'll let you know next week. So uh, Sunday, February 27th is Vestry. 
If you are a leader of any one of the ministries, I ask that your reports be in by uh, February 7th, please and thank you. Another date to mark on your calendar is Tuesday, March the 1st. We are going to be having a takeout pancake dinner. Tuesday, March the 1st is Shrove Tuesday. So yeah, we're gonna do pancake dinners this year. Uh, more details to come. This is a side note. There was a lovely lady who came into the office. She dropped off some gift cards and she had them in an envelope and on the envelope was her address. I took the gift cards out because uh, they were meant for the blessing box. And I think I threw out the envelope with your address. I was going to write you a thank you card. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I, I, I wish I could write you a card personally, but whoever you are, thank you so much for your donation for the blessing box. We are so appreciative of it. Lastly, uh, I just want to kind of give you a quick update on our sound system. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who has donated to it so far. We have raised $16,566. Yesterday, uh, we presented, um, we had a little presentation uh, for a grant that we had applied to, and it was for $20,000. Uh, and if we had gotten the grant, we'd be working on the system. Unfortunately, we did not get the grant. I know, it makes me sad too. But I just wanted to clarify a few things because I've had people question why we need to spend money on this sound system and the, the projector. As we talked today, as I said today about us being one body and working together, part of our body of this church is not working, it is broken. And for us to enhance our ministry, whether it be to you, live streaming, outreach, whether it be to the people who come into the body of this church when we are allowed in-person services, whether it be to, for families who get married here so we can record their services, or people who want to rent our church to have concerts like they used to, this is a ministry, and it's a ministry that we need to help mend. So we are gonna look for other grants. If anybody has any wonderful, brilliant ways that we can help fundraise and to get the rest of the money that we need, because we still need about another, I think it's 18,000, um, please give me a call. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. Take care.